This is another fairly brief recording. It's for your pain management for acute and chronic pain that goes along with your Module 3 on Comfort, Exemplar 3A, Acute and Chronic Pain. Well, there are multiple things in here. We are only, I am only covering the pharmacology of it. So here's just a little chart reminding of mild, moderate, and severe pain because you should have an idea of, as you get, the here's talking post-op, but any kind of pain that it should be getting down and you should be working your way down. So acetaminophen uh, and NSAIDs for mild pain, other non-opioid allergies, except we'll cover possibly opioids for moderate pain. When you get into severe pain, there's multiple things to add in to manage that. So, like I said, there's prescriptions, over-the-counter NSAIDs and acetaminophen, antidepressants, topical analgesics, and anticonvulsants all can be used in combination for pain management. Just, um, I'm, again, I'm not doing the med surge. But there's page 163, table 3.2, talks about uh, the different types of pain. You also have table 3, 1 on 161, talks about types of pain stimuli. Um, I think it's something else. Where was it? Barriers to pain managing box 3.2 on 165. These are all things to help you understand why these different medications may be used to help with, with pain management. So we're going to stop, start with our non-opioid analgesics. As I do this, let me, I don't know, again, what's covered in med surge. So what is an opioid? It's a compound resembling Opium. Opium is a natural occurring plant, so they have opioids that are made from that or, or artificially made. And they act on the opioid receptors in the central nervous system to produce a morphine-like effect. So first we're starting on the non-opioid analgesics. And when we get to opioid, we'll talk about the morphine equivalent, and that's why. So anyway, these are non-opioids, non narcotics. So just a quick review, which I'm sure you already covered and probably covered also in pathophysiology, the inflammatory cascade, the um, phospholipids, you have your arachnoid acid. So this is where arachidonic acid and inflammatory response, where, why the cyclo cyclooxygenase, when we start talking about COX inhibitors, inflammatory things, blocking this arachidonic acid. So the reason I did this, it increases sensitization, inflammation, dilatation, so you will understand why drugs work. Okay, this is another slide about um, the same thing in a different platform, whichever works better for you. So these medications we will talk about or COX-1 and COX-2 on the next slide when we talk about non-steroidals because they will work on COX-1 or COX-2 or non-specific where they're working on both. So you see that you have your COX-1 inhibitors in your stomach, intestines, kidney, and platelets. They're very protective mucosal protective, renal blood flow, and hemostasis. So when you talk about ibuprofen and things like that, that's why they have the adverse effects they have on the stomach, on the intestines, risk in the kidney, and platelet aggregation, because that's the COX-1 that gets inhibited when we get there. Prostaglandins. Prostaglandins call them Inflammatory sites, macrophages, and sinusites, inflammation, pain, and fever. 
So that's how they can be with their COX-1 and COX-2, how they reduce the fever, decrease the inflammatory pain, because they're decreasing that prostaglandin synthesis in the tissue and in the central nervous system. So they decrease the sensitivity of the nerve endings and the neuroreceptor impulses that are getting sent back to the central nervous system. And part of the pain relief has to do with the inflammation, but it also blocks those nerve endings. So it works in two ways. So non-selective, all of these are ones that work on the COX-1 and COX-2. So your COX non-selectives are diclofenic, ibuprofen, ketoprofen, aspirin, naproxen, pyroxicam, which I have never given, indomethacin, mephanic acid, which I've never given. So I'd like you to focus on the diclofenic, ibuprofen, aspirin, naproxen, indomethacin. Indomethacin is usually used for like a, a significant arthritis. Anyway. And then your selective NSAIDs, these are ones that work on the COX-2, they're selective. The only two I want you to focus on is Celexoxib, I always call it Celebrex, it's easier to say, and Meloxicam. Those are the most common, those are the ones you will encounter the most. And if NCLEX is going to ask you something, I expect those two. If anything, COXIB is in these, so they're a COX-2 inhibitor that work on macrophages and synovocytes. That's why they're great in inflammation in joints. Aspirin is acetyl group binds to in the, inside the COX enzyme, so it's also non-specific, blocking the COX. That's where aspirin is a um, non-selective COX inhibitor. They're used for a low to moderate pain and fever because they're block blocking the prostaglandins. Of course, side effects, GI discomfort, nausea, increased risks of GI bleeding and dizziness, all because of how they work. Diclofenic and dimethacin and keteroloc all have the potential side effect of fluid retention. Remember, your now all of these are on your uh, non-specific, but they cause fluid retention. Another note: your celoxib, celebrex, uh, a black box warning with cardiac. That's where I think all the other COX twos, as far as I know, are still off the market. And celebrex. Siloxazib is the only one still on the market. It was off for a while because of cardiac complications, so you would not give this to somebody with a cardiac complication history MI. This is just a good little picture on your NSAIDs. No pain, no flame, and no heat when we meet. Analgesic, anti-inflammatory, antipyretic. Take one, two, three, four. Oh, that's all I can do for one day. But depending on which one it is, whether it's once a day, some of them are once a day, some are twice every 12 hours, but uh, they can be tough on the gut. So you want to take it with something in the stomach, watch out for GI distress, dizziness, rash, heartburn, and occult blood in stools. So now we're going to talk a little bit about acetaminophen or Tylenol, because it doesn't quite fit anywhere. I've seen farm books in the past that listed under NSAIDs, and it is not an NSAID. It's in a realm all of its own. It's called paracetamol, which you're only going to see it written as acetaminophen or Tylenol. And remember, with your acetaminophen, it is in lots of the opioids, so that's part of your teaching. So acetaminophen penetrates the blood-brain barrier. It blocks the COX-3 in the brain, so it's not a COX-1 or COX-2, it blocks the, the 3 so formation or release of prostaglandin in the central nervous system inhibits the pyrogens. So that's where it reduces your fever. It has a great antipyretic effect. And because of the release uh, blocking the prostaglandins in the central nervous system, it also helps with pain, but not with inflammation. 
this is a picture about your pain uh, gate control, which I know I saw. Where did I see it? Gate control. I know I saw that in your text somewhere where it talks about the gate control. Anyway, we're not getting into some of these over here. or have got some triptans because that's for specific for migraines. Uh, but just here you have opioid receptors, which I mentioned your opioid receptors in the brain, and that is where your opioids and your narcotics work, way up here in your brain. So the gate control theory, impulses of pain can be blocked at parts and levels of transmission. It doesn't stop the pain, it just stops the impulse of telling you you are having pain. Okay, so now let's get into our opioid analgesics. <laughs> Slide different here. Okay, so now your opioids are your narcotics, controlled substances, all different levels of them. You have your full opioid agonists. Remember, they're, you're not taking opium, but they... Agonists. They work on that opioid receptor. The action is activate opioid receptor in the brain in the full opioid effect. Examples are codeine, fentanyl, heroin, hydrocodone, methadone, morphine, and oxycodone. These are full opioid. We're going to talk about weaker ones in a minute. Page 168 has a box 3.3 as your category of your non-opioid analgesics where your acetaminophen is in there and the Rex are a different kind of NSAIDs which I talked about. Skip over, go down to mixed opioid, no, no, no. Your strong op opioids which we're covering here, fentanyl, hydromorphone, the peridine I don't have on the list here. These are the ones I want you to focus on. Fentanyl, hydromorphine which is dilaudid, your meperidine, which is Demerol, don't see it as much. Uh, methadone is in there. That's in a world of its own, which we'll talk about more so in um, mental health for drug addiction. You got your morphine sulfate, oxycodone. Those are the ones I want you to focus on. Fentanyl, hydromorphone, meperidine, morphine, and oxycodone. Extreme caution and for respiratory depression. Remember, it works in the full opioid effect in that receptor in your brain in the central nervous system. So caution if they already have respiratory depression, such as a COPD or any head injury, alcoholism, status post CBA stroke, coronary artery disease, and hypertension. Caution in pregnancy and lactation. Adverse effects, constipation, constipation, constipation. If you remember nothing else, constipation, you're going to put them on a stool, softener, fight for food, increase fluids, they're going to be constipated. Some nausea, vomiting, some people get biliary spasms. Some can even have ureteral spasms and causing urinary retention and loss of libido. Sex drive. It has, because of where it works, it has a physical and psychological dependence. Safety, 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 safety. Bed in low position, call light in reach, monitor for respiration, respiratory depression. IV is the most reliable to get full therapeutic effect because nothing gets wasted going through anywhere else. IM or sub-Q, the rate of absorption is different between men, males and females because of our fat and muscle, where it goes rap more rapid with the muscle in the male. Hepatic metabolism and generally excreted in the urine and bile. So you're watching your liver function and like that alcoholism and excreted in the urine bile. So you're watching your kidney function also. Let's talk about your partial opioid agonist for moderate and severe pain, mostly moderate pain. Um, yeah, moderate to severe. So these partial opioid agonists or narcotics at low doses have similar effects of the full agonists. The analgesic activity will plateau. That's a key here. Will plateau and further increases doses will not provide additional relief but may increase the adverse effects. So nalbufene or nubane and tramadol or ultram. 
Nubane used to be used a lot. You start seeing it so much when tramadol came around because tramadol was synthetic and it wasn't going to cause addiction. Well, lo and behold, both cause addictions and lots of problems and overdoses. So you see here on your black box warming on tramadol, addiction, abuse, and misuse. It's so significant that it's now a black box warning. And it has analgesic effect because it's partial opioid agonist. It maxes out, so increasing the dose is not going to help if they're on one of these two medicines. Alters the pain reception and emotional response to pain. Causes less conformational change in receptor activation than full agonist because it's a partial agonist. Careful caution, precaution with your central nervous system depression, respiratory depression, GI obstruction because it slows everything down. Uh, uh, contraindicated to take it with alcohol, benzodiazepines, which I think we'll talk about benzos, anxiety, and mental health. Do not mix with the herbs Cava Cava, St. John's Wort, and Valerian Root because those three are central nervous system depressants. So you do not want two central nervous system depressants. Now, Bufine or Norbane has a ceiling effect on the respiratory depression. So even though it, it will stop working in pain, it also, if you keep up in the dose, the respiratory depression does not get worse on the new. Now, now Bufine. And uh, reported to reverse respiratory depression, but not analgesia. Okay. Let's see, Narcan, Narcan, Narcan. What do you do to stop the pain? Narcotic antagonists. They bind to the opioid site without activating them, and they reverse the effects of the opioid. It acts very, very, very rapidly. It blocks everything. And believe me, if you're going to give this to somebody, be prepared because they, when they come up, they come up fighting, swinging, clamoring because it's an immediate, total reversal. It can be given sub-Q, IM, or IV. I've never seen it oral, although there is an oral, oral um, component available, but anybody that's needed Narcan, they usually undo an IM or IV. Avoid in pregnancy and lactation and in in cardiovascular disease, adverse effects are nausea and vomiting, anxiety, tachycardia, hypertension, and tremulousness. And I have seen all of them. They come up with all of those effects happen when you shoot some Narcan in them. Let's see, I just realized I hadn't put the dose on here. Is it on your bottle? It is on your bottle. 0 0.4 milligrams. That is the most common dose. I don't even know if they have these little vials because now they you pop it off. Um, right there and that so you don't shatter the glass. If you still have a glass vial of anything, you should have learned in lab, probably did, and in clinicals you have to use a filtered needle to pull anything out of a glass vial that you have popped to draw the drug out of. And it's all over the news and billboards and everything that you can get scripts for Narcan because for drug overdoses, uh, even people on, with chronic pain on these meds like hospice and things, but drug addicts, so that they can get the Narcan. They even have it on campus now because it's such a significant, or they're going to get it on campus because it's such a significant problem. Okay, before I get to the last one, let's see. Uh, your weaker partial is still in box 3.3 there. There's something, I've, oh, co-analgesics on box 3.3. Some things that are sometimes given in chronic pain, severe pain, severe chronic pain, are these antidepressants. Uh, nortriptyline is what I've seen. That's a tricyclic TCA that we discussed in mental health. Anticonvulsants. Gabapentin is the most common one. Uh, Neurotin, which we will cover in our seizure section. Clonidine um, has been used. Clonidine is, is an antihypertensive but it's in that par that uh, zosin category, so you're watching for that significant post postural hypotension. Um, hydroxazine is your antipyritic. On page 168 is where I am. Hydroxazine, the brand name is Visteral. It's sometimes given also for anxiety. It's got multiple things, and it can help 
potentiate the uh, effects of for pain management. Corticosteroids such as prednisone and hydrocortisone, which I think we cover in our last module in farm a little bit. And then topical things like benzo benzocaine and lidocaine. Oh, and what I did forget, if you go back to your... Keterolac on your Toradol on your um, NSAIDs. It's it's the only one that comes in multiple forms. It's tablet, patch, ointment, gel, pill, and IM, an IV. It comes in every route possible. Okay, so no more pain. Laughter is the best medicine. Take your prescription to a funny-looking pharmacist. Just a little humor at the end there. That's the end of this recording. <laughs>